It's fair to say that Yamaha invented the Maxi Scooter when it brought out the T-Max all the way back in 2001. Fast forward 16 years, Maxi Scooters are now 10 a penny in many European cities. Yamaha has remained on top form with its large Max family, including the T-Max, X-Maxes and N-Max. But where does the X-Max 400 fit in? Introduced in 2013, it's there to bridge the gap between the motorcycle rivaling T-Max 530 and the lower capacity inner city X-Max 300. But it's also a competent offering in its own right, especially the 2018 model that I've tested at launch this week. While the T-Max features a centrally mounted engine, the X-Max 400 uses a swing arm mounted unit, which comes with its own advantages and disadvantages. There's more storage space under the seat, but the weight over the back wheel could make for a lighter front end. Yamaha's engineers countered this back in 2013 by moving the battery and fuel tank forward. But back to this engine. At 395cc, it's a middleweight maxi scoot. Making 32.9 horsepower, the Euro 4 unit is surprisingly powerful and torque is available from the off, reaching a peak of 26.6 pounds per foot at 6,000 revs. Acceleration is smooth and linear up until around 70 miles an hour, or 6,500 revs, where it noticeably wanes ahead of the claimed 7,000 rpm power peak. In 500 odd miles, I never once needed to reach red line and it didn't feel like I was ragging the throttle, despite pushing the scooter hard on both motorways and B roads. The engine is easily good enough for the national limit and beyond, although the 15 inch front wheel begins to wobble slightly at around 70 miles an hour. Yamaha claims a fuel economy of 67.6 miles per gallon, which I betted to 69.2 after a gentle country road ride. However, it did drop as low as 62 miles per gallon after a spirited motorway sprint. The engine idles at 1500 revs and the scooter can crawl at under 10 miles an hour at around 2000, which is handy because putting your feet down and paddling is quite awkward due to the wide seat. On the go, the X-Max 400 feels light and agile, much more so than the previous model thanks to a 5kg weight loss. It's pretty easy to steer, even at low speeds, and has a tight turning circle. However, it still does weigh 210 kilograms wet, which becomes obvious when you try and push the bike or put your feet down to paddle along. The 800 mm tall wide seat hinders paddling and I found that I could not get both feet on the ground unless I moved to in front of the seat. The X-Max 400 leans into corners pretty well, but if you lean over too far at too much of an angle, the centre stand tends to scrape along the floor, which is quite disconcerting. Adjustable handlebars, screen and rear suspension allows the rider to customise the bike to suit their size and riding style and once you find your perfect setup it does offer quite a comfortable ride. The seat is well padded but the lumbar supporting backrest could do with some forward adjustment to accommodate for shorter limbed riders. Personally I preferred the screen on its higher setting as it reduced wind buffeting and noise on the motorway and with the bars in the further away position my arms became less fatigued and the up riding position came more naturally. Unfortunately, to make these adjustments requires tools, so it's not a quick job. I would have liked to be able to lower the screen immediately each time we enter a town to improve visibility. New for 2018 is the X-Max's motorcycle-style dual clamp front forks, and there's also long travel rear suspension with preload adjustment. I rode the X-Max with the rear suspension on its middle setting. Uh, as with the bars, it does require tools to adjust and found it to be quite firm. Meanwhile, the front forks swallow small bumps to give the scooter a steady, stable ride. The X-Max 400 features dual brake discs up front and a single disc at the rear. Surprisingly, I preferred the feel of the rear brake over the front. Despite those twin discs up front, the rear felt sharper and more progressive, ultimately bringing the bike to a quicker, more stable stop. ABS is standard, non-obtrusive, only kicking in when needed, while basic traction control inspires confidence on slippy road surfaces, but thanks to the Michelin City Grip tyres, it was actually rarely needed. There's also a parking brake, which is activated by a simple lever, which secures the scooter while at a standstill. Where this scooter shines is in its equipment and attention to detail. I tested the £5,999 bike in its standard form, with the only addition of heated grips, at £134, they're definitely a necessary accessory, and while the front fairing shielded most of the wind from my hands, my fingers did get a little cold. That front fairing features Yamaha's recognisable twin LED headlight scooter face, and from the side, the manufacturer's iconic boomerang bodywork is clearly visible. In all, it's probably as stylish and sporty as a commuter scooter could be. Under the seat, there's a huge storage space which claims to fit two full-face helmets. Unfortunately though, my Shui GTR would only fit in the rear part of the compartment, it wouldn't shut. 
with the helmet in the front part. So if you're looking at buying the X-Max, make sure that your lids will fit first. Double stitch seams and a handy under seat light are proof of Yamaha's attention to detail, while the button to open the left of the X-Max's two glove box is not. Labelled lid, it took me quite a while to work out exactly what it opened, but when you do, open inside there's a handy 12 volt power socket. In front of the rider sits a smart instrument panel which features a classic pair of analogue dials against a black background with a multifunction LCD display sat in the middle. It's easy to change what it displays via a thumb switch on the right handlebar. Yamaha's smart key keyless ignition also features and it allows you to operate the scooter without a key providing you have the fob on your person. You just push the button in and then twist it to the required function. Although if you forget to return the switch to off before walking away, which actually happens surprisingly often on their launch, it beeps repeatedly. The X-Max 400 is well equipped with a premium finish and keyless ignition and at £5,999 is an attractive option for riders not yet ready to commit to the £9,599 T-Max. The beeping ignition can be a little overzealous, even beeping if you turn the engine off and remain sat on the bike. Arguably, I'm not Yamaha's target audience for the X-Max 400, and while I found it to be impressively capable, I also found it to be a little bit boring, to be honest. But as the saying goes, different straights for different folks, and there's plenty of folks who won't find many better options in the sporty maxi scooter market than the X-Max 400.